Hello, um, today we wanted to jump into a video and show you how you could take your local DBT core uh, models and take them up to the cloud and have them automated and running on a schedule, running on webhooks, um, really take that, that DBT core local concept into the cloud. Um, so we do have a written guide that I will link below if you prefer to go through this uh, in, in written or if you want to watch the video and then go back to the written version uh, to reference some things. Um, let's go through how you can do this inside of Shipyard. So again, we're taking DBT Core, we're going to take it into the cloud and automate it using Shipyard. Uh, so again, I'm assuming that um, I'm assuming that you already have DBT Core running on your local machine. Um, if not, we do have a getting started guide in our in our YouTube channel as well. To just get started using DBT Core. Uh, so if that's you, go and check that out. Uh, so, but again, I'm assuming you already have DBT Core up and running on your machine, doing some transformations for yourself. Um, so if you do, the first step in this is going to be uploading those models, uh, uploading you know basically that whole DBT setup um, into GitHub. Um, and so you can see I've already done that here uh, in this public repository uh, dbt underscore core underscore bigquery um, so you can you know you're welcome to go look at that repository um, and take a look at it uh, but you can see we have kind of the basic dbt model or dbt setup here with analysis data macros models snapshots and test um, again this is not a you know i don't really have a large dbt core run here so looking in models uh, you know we just have this 538 football with just a few staging um, and just a few mark tables off of that. So it's, this is not a big DBT core, uh, DBT core uh, setup that I have here, but this will work for any DB, like no matter how many models you have, this process will work for that as well. Um, so the only thing you're gonna need off of that local DBT core um, setup that you have is you're gonna need a Python script that's gonna allow uh, the process to run inside of Shipyard. Um, and then you're gonna need your profiles your profiles.yaml file uh, that's gonna allow you to connect to the cloud database of your choice. Um, you could already have that profiles.yaml set up, uh, but if not, I'm gonna touch on it in just a moment. So the first thing is this execute underscore dbt.py file you see here. Um, so inside of our inside of our blog post that I'll link below, uh, we have a Google Drive link that has. I'll show you here. It has four uh, Python scripts already uploaded here. So we have a Redshift, a Snowflake, a Databricks, and a BigQuery. Um, so those are just four of the big cloud data warehouses uh, that most of our customers use at Shipyard. Um, so if you use one of those, feel free to download that script, uh, rename it execute underscore dbt dot py, uh, and put that into your GitHub repository. Um, if you don't use one of those, uh, feel free to contact us, and we can help write that script for you as well. Um, so if you you know if you use you know maybe if you use just a SQL Server or something like that and want to run off of that, so, uh, feel free to contact us, and we'll help you build that Python script as well. Um, so that's where we get that execute dbt dot py file here. Um, and then secondly, we're going to need that profiles.yaml. Um, so I, I have the dbt documentation pulled up here. Um, you can see under setup CLI only here in their documentation. Um, you can see there's the BigQuery, Postgres, Redshift, Snowflake, SQL Server, so on and so forth. They have a lot of them there. So basically just go find your database of choice and build out that, uh, that YAML uh, file. So you can see here's um, how you can do it if you use OAuth with uh, Google Cloud. Um, token-based, service account file, in anything like that that you use, uh, you can just basically copy and paste that YAML, that profile.yaml over um, and put that into your GitHub repository as well. But if you have this running locally, you might already have that profiles.yaml, which in case you can just copy that thing over as well, um, and that'll work. Um, so those two things out, uh, those two things out of the way, um, you ha should have everything up, set up in uh, GitHub here. Um, so with that in mind, we can jump over into Shipyard. Uh, so jumping over in the shipyard, um, so I'm, I'm already in a fleet builder, but the first thing we need to do is make sure we connect our GitHub um, into uh, into shipyard. Um, so I'm not going to go into that uh, in depth here, uh, but we do have a video outlining how to connect GitHub to shipyard. Uh, I'll link that below uh, and have a pop up for that as well. Uh, so feel free to click that and integrate your GitHub into shipyard. Um, so assuming you've already done that, so let's just jump, in, jump into building our fleet so that we can run our DBT core processes in, in, in Shipyard and automate those things. Um, so what we're going to need to do is click on the Python code vessels. So what I don't want you to do, uh, just to stop you know, stop you from going there, 
Um, so you'll see that we do have library blueprints that are dbt cloud. Um, so if you do use dbt cloud instead of dbt core, um, you're, you're more than welcome to use these low code uh, templates that we have for dbt cloud. Um, but if you want to use dbt core, um, we can't pre-program this for you just because you got to have uh, if you got to have a GitHub setup that you can connect to. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to click on this Python code vessel. Um, this is going to create a vessel for us inside of our fleet builder. Um, so we can name this vessel um, dbt core CLI command. OK, so that, that's what we can name our vessel. So this is just going to send a CLI command to dbt core to allow that to allow it to run. Um, so then we're going to come down here to the code section of our vessel. Um, and so you can we're going to run it off Python 3.9 uh, so that we can run the newest version of dbt core. Um, and so the file to run is that's going to be that file that we we put into our GitHub repository. So that's execute uh, underscore dbt.py. So it's going to execute that script that we added in to allow us to interact with your dbt. Um, and so you're more than welcome to write the code inside of Shipyard, but since we already uploaded it to GitHub, we can click on Git. Uh, we want to select our repository. So back, if whenever you set up your GitHub, um, you either just chose one repository, which could you know would be the one that you had your uh, DBT uh, process set up in, um, or you could give us access to all your repositories if you want to run other code inside of Shipyard as well. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do our DBT core BigQuery. Um, so that's the that is the repository uh, that we were looking at earlier. Um, and then code source, I only have my main branch. So that's what we're going to work with. Um, and so it's important that we do unpack in the current working directory down here. A uh, new folder will work, but unpacking in the current working directory will just dump everything from that GitHub repository into the base working directory inside of Shipyard, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, so this is a, so that's set up to run that uh, run that script, but um, just like in most Python uh, scripts, you, you you need to import some things, you need to download some packages. So let's scroll down, um, and we also need to set up some environment variables. So um, inside of our inside of our script, we have some environment variables that we need to set up for. Um, so those, so we're gonna expand our environment variables section here and add our environment variable. Um, so the first one we need to do is dbt underscore profiles underscore directory okay and for that we're literally just going to put a dot in there um, so just a period um, so that's telling us where that that profiles.yaml file is located um, if you put that in a folder or something inside of that directory you would obviously need to change this to not just be the period uh, but so where i put it in the in my um <clears throat> in my repository will work here uh, for just the period um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to we need to set up a environment variable for the command that we're going to send dbt. So we name that dbt underscore command. <clears throat> and for that, we need to we're going to do dbt debug. Um, so I always recommend when someone's starting off with running dbt and something different to run dbt debug just to make sure that connection um, is running well uh, between dbt and your database. Um, and so a couple of other ones that um, a couple of the other things that I need to add in are I've so instead of so I'm using a, a JSON service account uh, connection into BigQuery. Um, so I didn't want to just put that JSON into the GitHub repository for anyone to see. Uh, so I'm going to place it in here as a an as an environment variable. Um, so this is BigQuery underscore creds, um, and I'm going to paste that JSON in there. Um, so that's for that. And then uh, one more that's just specific for this is our BigQuery un underscore key file. And for that, I'm going to tell it the location of that, which would be dot backslash BigQuery underscore creds dot JSON. Um, so I'm going to link the repository um, in the in the description below, and you're going to see where these things are coming from. Um, but if we want to just look at this code real quick, this Python script, so you're going to see we're grabbing the dbt underscore command here for that variable inside of our Python script. There's where that BigQuery creds is coming from. Um, and we have a little bit of work here to output that as BigQuery creds, which is what we put in uh, for the BigQuery key file environment variable. Um, and then going to our profiles.yaml us a file here you can see there's that environment variable being set there um, so that's just a little bit of extra work there to protect that service that, that google service account from being exposed to the public um, if you set up a private repository and are okay kind of putting your um, 
putting your uh, credentials in there. You know, we wouldn't advise that, uh, but you're welcome to. If not, you can use service accounts, or I'm sorry, you can use environment variables to protect those things from being seen by the public. Uh, so jumping back in the shipyard. Uh, so that's all the environment variables that we need to run. If you're not going to protect anything using um, using uh, using environment variables, you only need these first two, uh, which I have outlined in the blog post, uh, but you can use even any more to protect any uh, credentials or uh, sensitive information like that. Um, so we're good for environment variables. So now we need to add in our Python packages. Um, so since we're running dbt with BigQuery, the package we're going to use is dbt-bigquery. And we're going to use the newest version, which currently is 1.3.0. I'm sure as soon as I record this video and release it, they're going to release 1.3.1. Uh, that's usually how that goes. But we're going to use the newest version that's currently available, which is 1.3.0. Um, so again, if you're using another uh, another database, um, you know you can use dbt snowflake dash databricks uh, dash redshift. They have those adapters for. Um, for most databases already set up, and then the community is also creating some of those as well for some of the smaller databases that are out there. Um, so it looks like we're good to go on setup here. The only thing we need to do is name our fleet. Um, so we're going to name this dbt core uh, bigquery. We'll name our fleet here. Um, and so last but not least, we're going to click save and finish here. So I'm going to click this, uh, but it's going to take us to a page telling us that the fleet has been created successfully. And now I can go ahead and kick off this on-demand run of this fleet. Um, so this is going to take us over to our fleet log page here, which is going to give us a live output of this thing running. Uh, since we only have one vessel, we're just going to get one uh, one uh, rectangle in our Gantt chart here in just a moment that's going to show this running. Um, it's going to turn yellow while it's running, uh, and then turn green whenever it finishes successfully, or turn red if it's not finishing successfully. Um, and so in just a little note on while we're running dbt debug instead of like a dbt run. Um, so this is going to connect to make sure that everything is working successfully with our credentials, with our setup. And then once this turns green, we can run this. We, you know, we can do a dbt run, a dbt build, a dbt test, uh, you know, a dbt depths or something like that. Um, and all that's going to work. Uh, it's going to work with your database inside of dbt. Uh, so you can see this thing, this uh, this uh, Gantt chart turn green. And you can see we have a success up here under status. If I click inside of this Gantt chart, it's going to show me the Python output, which is always great to see. Um, with our uh, with our dbt processes. Um, so you can see it found our profiles.yaml, it found our dbt project, get was required, so it was also found. Um, you can see all the connections here. You can see the schema, the database. I did it through a service account like I talked about earlier. Um, and so you can see that it says all checks pass. Uh, so what that means running inside a dbt debug, if you get an all checks pass, that means everything is set up correctly. Uh, so now using this same process, you can change that dbt command in that in that environment variable to a dbt run or a dbt build um, and actually run those dbt models that you had set up. Um, so a few a few next steps to think about here. So this is uh, this is the way of doing it with a vessel, um, building a code vessel inside of the fleet builder. Um, but you're going to know if you do this multiple times, it's not very user friendly and it's not going to be very good to replicate over and over and over again. Um, so what we would recommend is creating a blueprint over here on the left side of the page. Uh, so creating a blueprint with basically the same process. Um, so that allows you to give that that dbt commands as a variable. Um, so you can just easily replicate this and just change that command. Um, and it's going to be able to allow you to run any of your dbt commands with the setup that you already have without having to retype in that setup every single time, which can be tedious. Um, so we do have a guide available for that as well. Um, so if you want to check that out, feel free. Um, and the two other things that, that are uh, important next steps. Um, so we have our triggers up here. Um, so if we look at our triggers, you can set a schedule to run this on a schedule. So if you if you want your DBT uh, your DBT jobs running every morning, you know you can set that to schedule. You know you know maybe daily at you know maybe you know eight a.m. in the morning. And that's going to kick that off and run it every single morning. Um, you can also kick off a webhook. Uh, so if you want this to to run after some event, you can add the webhook there to to. Uh, uh, to make that run. So just a couple of next steps for you. So that, uh, this will get you up and running inside of Shipyard with DBT Core in the, in the cloud. Uh, but if you want to take that kind of the next level, you can build it out in a blueprint uh, and then also set up some triggers to have this thing running on your schedule. I hope that this has helped you to take your DBT processes from your local machine to the cloud. If there's any other processes that you would like to try and automate, check out our other videos or send us a note and we would love to help you get started automating your other processes inside of Shipyard.